it ran through my head a hundred times. What do I do? How, how do I get out of this? I'm, they're they're going to kill me. Ellis Athanas III admits he was a lower level drug dealer and owed money. November 21st, 2016, Blake and Caleb Lawbanger beat him and kidnapped him from his home on this quiet Maplewood street. They drove him down I-44 to Pacific. I jumped into the front seat and I'd actually uh, started kicking Blake uh, to try and crash the car. There was a semi right next to us. I heard it just lay on its horn. He says they came feet from a guardrail. Ellis thought he'd more likely survive a 70 mile an hour crash than he would his kidnappers. I had to do something. I remember going over a bridge and I was like, oh, should I do it here? Instead of played over and over in my mind, do I do, I do this? Uh, I've got to do something, they're going to kill me. He says they pulled up to Blake Lobinger's house and dragged him into the basement. This is where you're going to die. There was plastic already laid down on the floor waiting for me. He says they zip tied his hands over his head and around a pole where he stayed nearly two days. But I could see my hands turning purple, almost black. They were just the circulation was cut out completely. I couldn't, they were numb. I couldn't feel them anymore. And I kept pleading and just begging them to loosen the restraints. And every time I did, Blake would come over with a taser and he'd hit me. Court records indicate Todd Beckman repeatedly pistol whipped Ellis and pressed the barrel of a gun to his forehead, pulling the trigger. I can hear it click, yes. The gun being pressed into the top of my head, just multiple times, over and over again. The tensing up is like, oh, like, I'm gonna die right now. Meanwhile, a thousand miles away here in Ocala, Florida, Ellis's mom got a phone call she will never forget. My baby screaming and in pain. They said, you'll never spend another Thanksgiving with your son. She gathered as much cash as she could. My daughter and I um, took off driving at five o'clock that afternoon to go to St. Louis with the money. Now it's the day before Thanksgiving and they've had him now for almost three days. There were times where I thought that that was the last time I would hear my mom's voice. The kidnappers moved Ellis again. This time, tying him inside Let's go. this storage container on Beckman's Fenton property. It was like the door of my life shutting. There's just a little peephole in the top of the container that I could, I could see out, and it was pouring down rain that night, lightning, thunder. When his parents delivered the money, the kidnappers drove him behind the Fenton target and dumped him. I was sitting in my car, and Somebody knocked on the window and I didn't recognize it was my son. They had shaved his head. Ellis testified at Beckman's sentencing. He was Beckman's drug dealer. I've certainly made um, my own mistakes. Uh, I'm no shiny penny. I've got my own, my own history and my own past and uh, it got me mixed up with the wrong crowd. Today I, I feel like I, I have a second chance um, to one, get away from that. and. Uh, I've had a lot of young guys uh, in my life that um, you know, I've met along this, this journey and like um, and in my past uh, that I feel like I can let them know that this isn't, this isn't the right place to be. There's nothing good to come out of it. Okay, sure, you make a bunch of money, you can uh, live fast, buy nice cars and um, you know, have this freedom, but at what cost? Your life, that's not worth it.